Okay, we, um, we're just putting the brake in. Here's a method called brake call. We'll just pass, delegate that straight down to the brake itself, pass our method through. It doesn't exist, so let's add it to the brake class. Okay, the brake class goes like this. Brake full is, let's say, the brake has 10 possible positions it can be in. Of course, it's an analog thing, it's got more than that. So we'll say, um, Set break to um, what do you have, maximum maybe final mint max break ten set break to uh, max break. Right, so I need a set break function. And the idea being the um, functions we're going to offer to the driver will call set break themselves. But the driver doesn't have to know about the internal operations of set break, how that works. So, uh, yep. Uh, set break takes and sets it to the break position. And we'll say. Save the brake position. Um, I guess we should set the brake position. Is this a yeah, that's the position. And I guess we can't have negative brake positions. All right, we're going to set the brake. Um, now, when we set the brake, we'd better tell the engine about it because we have this relationship with the engine. Um, the brake talks to the engine. So either the brake's going to have to know about the engine or the engine's going to have to know about the brake or there's going to have to be some way they can talk to each other. And the way we're doing it um, right now is we'll say that the brake knows about the engine and the brake will talk to the engine by referring to the engine by name. So we'll say um, this dot engine. Um, now, we're going to have to tell, uh, oh no, actually the brake doesn't talk to the engine, sorry. Um, brake talks to the wheels. So, depending on the brake position, we're going to apply a different braking force to the wheel. Mm, how does that work? Um, uh, if I knew a bit more physics, I, we could probably come up with a realistic model here, but let's say braking force is, uh, I don't know, a, a real number between Zero and one inclusive. Um, zero means no braking force, and one means it's got a hundred percent braking force. Mm, wish I knew more about friction and newtons and things. Okay, so we're going to go uh, this dot wheels dot um, set braking force is equal to. What's it going to be equal to? Well, um, the brake position. I guess over max break, is it this simple as that? Yeah. I think it is. Now, I don't want that to be an integer division, so I'd better. Um, break position. I'd better convert that to a. Like saying, so it doesn't have floating point division. Is that line too long now? Yeah, okay. Um, double breaking um, portion. Equals sorry, line eighty two um, double breaking proportion equals mm. 
probably don't need both those floats. I expect just one float. It's got to be enough. Was it to do? Um, not to do integer division. So now that's going to give us um, uh, uh, what's it? the line length seventy four. So it all fits in. So everything's good. Okay. Set the wheel breaking force to breaking. Now let's say that the pedal, the brake itself, makes a little noise when you push it, just so we can see that something's happening. Maybe it makes a little squeak. So we'll go, um, it's going to go squeak. So we'll go system.out.println. Print to squeak. But, um, You know, I guess the further you push the brake, the longer the squeak's going to be. And if you don't move the brake at all, like if you set it to a position it's already out, it probably won't squeak at all. So probably what we need to say is system.out.print squee, let's print squee, and then for int i, Equals zero. Um, start i at um, um, let's think. Let's say it only squeaks when you press it down. When you release it up, it doesn't squeak at all. Okay, so um, say i equals um, what have we done? We've just changed brake position. Maybe we should do the squeak first. I mean, now the old and new values. For i equals the um, old position, which is position. As long as it's less than the new position, so we'll tick down once for each position it moves down through, so it gets to the new position. Print. Print. I won't say print then, because let's not print the new line character. So we can append this onto the old thing. E. See what's happening here? We'll just print lots of these the further down it goes, and then at the end we'll just print. Now we'll do the print line finally. Alright. All right. Oh, oh now it's not happy. Let's see. What have we, what have we done wrong? Break position. List dot break position. Don't we have a list dot break position now? Okay. We better store the current break position. When we create the break, do we have to set the break position to anything, um, or is the break position initially undefined? I guess when you make a break, there's no way of knowing where the break will be. So maybe we shouldn't initialize it. Hmm. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. I think uh, just trying to think of what I know about brakes. I guess they're normally spring loaded, aren't they? So if you let them go, they go all the way off. So we should probably say that. Okay. So we better create a create um create a constructor class public brake. And if someone just um constructs the break will say stop break position equals zero all the way up. Breaks are off when installed. Okay. So let's see. We've got our um, constructor that initializes break position to zero. 
and we store the maximum break position, which is 10. Um, if someone does break full, we set the break to be at the maximum break position. Set break is a function that, given the new break position, maybe I should, that's put a name for it, new, oh, I'll just refactor that. Refactor, rename, and then new break position, let's be clear. Um, that when we know a new break position, we check that it's greater than or equal to the uh, less than or equal to the maximum amount. It's greater than or equal to nothing. Um, we print some squeaks, and then we, as it moves between the positions, then we set the alt, the um, object's internal notion of what position is at to be the new position. We compute the proportion. Oh, now I increase the length of that variable. Does that mean that line's now too long? Plus. Minus one. Oh, 77. Woohoo! We made it. We are uh, limits 80. Um, yep, that's all looking good. This top break position is not happy with this top break position. Why not? Oh, capital B. Thank you. And this top wheels. And then after we've um, recorded the change in state of the pedal, we'd better tell apply the actual brake. We'd actually better do the braking and apply the braking force to the wheels. So here we are. So we call a function in wheels called um, uh, set braking force. So we'd better make sure the wheels. Oh, okay, we've got a couple of problems here. First of all, the wheel class doesn't have a function called set braking force, but second of all, um, we don't have any wheels. The brake doesn't know about any wheels. We better tell it. Let the brake keep track of the car's wheels. So it will keep a reference to the car's wheels. Five it. Wheels, wheels. There we go. And when we construct the brake now, we better tell it about the wheels so it knows about them. Wheels. This top wheel. Oh, capital <laughs> equals. Wheels. So initialize um, the wheel. So now we're going to store as a, a private attribute the wheels that we know about, and that's how we're going to communicate with them by remembering that we are connected to those wheels. And whenever we want to send a message to them, we'll just go wheels dot blah blah blah. The message we're going to send. Now we'd better make, uh, deal with the fact that the class wheels won't understand the message, and we'd better add that method to wheels. So the class wheels now has something called set braking force, given a braking force. And let's just simply make it remember its braking force for now. So uh, prime, uh, um, in fact, Eclipse do the hard work for us. We'll just say this dot braking proportion uh, equals braking proportion. Feel for me, please. Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay. So the wheels now remember the braking proportion that the um, brake sends them. Let's compile and see how we go. Okay, now we've still got a problem. A null pointer exception. Let's have a look. Oh, cancel. I just want to find where it is. Line 51. Ah, okay. Now, the only thing we're referring to here is break. So the null pointer must be that we're referring to null. So that's telling us that this point here, break, the, which is, what are we inside the car class? Okay. Uh, break is null. So we're talking to a null thing. Does that mean we never created a break? Oh, I see. Yes, we've defined a reference to one, but we've never created one. So we'd better do that. This dot engine. Uh, this dot, sorry, break, a reference to the break equals a new, and we'll make a new break. Make a new break. What do you wish you say when you're programming? Let's have a look here. Why is it unhappy with that? Well, we do have a constructor, but the constructor we have isn't um, to make a break, doesn't need nothing, it needs to know about some wheels, and they're the wheels that the break needs to know about. So we have to pass the wheels in so it knows the wheels it's connected to. So we'd better tell it the wheels. And we have some wheels, so why don't we just pass those in? Let's start wheels. Woohoo! Okay, now let's try it now. Live from car because I'm not running the test. Car, let's run the test. And again, we've got a problem in break.java this time. Uh, let's see, null pointer exception. You can, I'm hoping you can see the problem now. I'll just be silent for 10 seconds. Well, I can't wait 10 seconds, but did you see? It's wheels. Um, wheels must be null. 
What is wheels? This not wheels, it's our attribute. It's null, but doesn't get initialized when we create the break? Yes, whatever we pass into the constructor gets stored in that field. That field is null, so we must have passed a null in. So let's go back to car, which actually created the break, and let's see what it passed in. It passed in this dot wheels. We have a field called this dot wheels, that must be null. Uh, that's sort of telling us, I bet we never initialized it, and lo and behold, we looked down here and we never did. So we'd better create a new set of wheels before we create the break, actually, because we have to pass them to the break to tell the break about them. So this dot wheels equals new wheels. Oh, how are we going now? Oh, looking good. The car works. What about the test? Uh, oh, oh look, look at this. Oh, okay, testing the car. We, that's our basic test running. Actually, it's a bit annoying that we can't see which tests are running, isn't it? Let's put a little message at the front of each test. Um, System to the front line. Uh, about to run basic. to perform exciting takeoff tests. Cool, that looks better. Let's have a look. So it's about to perform the basic test. It looks like they all passed fine because now we're about to perform the takeoff test. Squee oh, it's dropping to a new line each time. I wanted those to all join together. What happened there? And um, that was in our break, wasn't it? Our squeaky break. The further you push it down the more ease you got. And uh, even though I was talking about print, it looks like I typed print lun. Must be going mad. So we print squee, then we print e, and then we print lun k at the end. All right, let's see how that goes. That looks better. Squeak. So we pushed the brake down a lot. And that makes sense, remember, because we went and said brake full on, um, and the brake was currently off, so it had to go through 10 positions. So there should be hopefully something like 20 e's there. So the brake is just making a squeaking sound as you push it down. This isn't the screech of the tyres, it's just a little tiny squeak as you push down the brake. In fact, uh, it looks more exciting than it is, doesn't it? It looks like the car's squeaking. We'll have to, when we do the car's squealing, we'll have to use capital letters to distinguish it from this wussy little squeak sound. So our brakes are squeaking. Then we've got whir purr. That must be us turning the engine on. Let's look at the tests we're actually going through here. Um, we braked full, that made the squeaking sound. We turn the engine on, whir purr. And then we've got an exception. Presumably, oh, uh, which exception is it? That's fine. Fine, 54. Okay, so we accelerated wildly. That was fine. We found the speed was still zero. We took the foot off the brake. It's silent. Our brakes are silent when you're um, releasing them. Remember, it only squeaks when it goes down for some reason. And um, now we're not accelerating wildly. Our speed is still zero. And you can probably guess why. Um, A, we have an implemented foot off the brake. But probably even more serious than that, we haven't implemented the accelerator. Let's just do foot off the brake first. Where's foot off the brake? Well, it's not even created. So the car hasn't yet delegated that down to us. So let's have a copy of foot off the brake somewhere. Car dot foot off the brake we called. Foot off the brake. And that's going to call this dot brake. We'll pass it down to the brake. Um, uh, what, we'll just call it uh, release. Foot off altogether, that's going to put the brake entirely the other way. We're not really making use of the intermediate positions of this brake yet, are we? Release brake. Yes. And it's going to be very similar to this one. Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, we don't have to rewrite set brake. Um, set brake does all the work for us, it's our internal function. We just write our public function. That calls it. So um, we're just going to have to say set brake, break, foot off the brake altogether, set brake zero, no break. Right? That was quick to implement. We're going to have the same problem though because we haven't yet, notice, we have the same problem because we haven't yet implemented our accelerator. So let's go back to the car and look what's happening here. Accelerate wildly, I believe, was a function we hadn't implemented. So what's accelerate wildly going to do? Well, it's going to tell that this dot. Accelerator 
It's going to tell it to um, Well, you know, it sounds, what it has to do is a lot like the brake class. It's making me think, maybe we need a pedal class. Maybe there, there are more similarities between these two methods than I thought initially. Hmm, okay. Well, I'm going to write them as separate things now, but it's going to be copying and pasting, and they're going to look very similar. And so as an exercise for you, as soon as this video is over, could you please rewrite the brake and accelerator classes to use a common pedal class? So we'll just say um, accelerate wildly is uh, um, that's what pedal to the floor or something. It's just full on. So full on. Full on. Full on. Full on. And slam on the brakes, we might as well do that at the same time. And that's going to be this dot brake dot set full on. I'm going to give them the same names to make it obvious what we're doing. This is going to be very similar here. All right, let's implement this dot brake set full on first. And you can guess how it goes. Oh, hang on. We've already got a function called break full. So we didn't need that function. So I'm going to do that. Break full is the same, so go back to the car. Slam on break is just break full. Different names for the two. I guess maybe slam on brake has the implication you're pushing it down a bit faster. I don't know if I would really need to have them as separate functions or not, do I? It doesn't seem to do anything different. Anyway, at the moment, it's leaving to be different, and that is something that really looks like it needs to be refactored out. Okay, and accelerate while well, these are accelerator dot set full on. So let's do that. Now notice the accelerator looked a lot like the brake. I'm just going to copy the break, whole break class. When you get to do a big copy and paste like this, it's simultaneously exciting but also worrying because it's basically an indication that you've um, not designed it very well. You shouldn't be able to copy and paste. Let's have a look here what we need. Let's delete that there. And so Fix all this up. It's talking about brakes everywhere. It's really max position, isn't it? Uh, it's really um, current position. I should have refactored the whole thing. Position. Let's run now. Where have we gone? What am I doing? Start current position. Start current position. So, start. Now, well, our accelerator doesn't talk to the wheels. Our accelerator talks to the engine. So, we better pass in an engine when we create the accelerator. For accelerator. Just changing brakes to accelerators everywhere, basically. Okay, and it doesn't talk to the wheels, it talks to the in, uh, engine, so we need to keep a local copy of the engine, not a local copy of the wheels. It's not really a local copy, what we're keeping is a reference to the engine that this accelerator controls. 
So full on set set pedal to this dot. Hope you can see I'm already writing it more generally now, knowing in my heart these guys are just about to be merged. So, and it's called set pedal. Well, I should have refactored this. Now I'm going to have to, the refactor option in Eclipse would have renamed everything consistently, but stupidly for some reason I'm doing it manually. I don't know why I did that. New position. Even after saying that that's what I'm doing, I did it again. Stop doing that. I think I needed to change it. Now let's see, does this one squeak when it's being pushed down? Maybe this one, that's another sound you can make there. Could go uh, click, could click when you're pushing it down. No, I think about it, the other one's going to squeak even if we don't move it. Just one too many squeaks, doesn't it? Poor old brake. I should have tweaked that loop so the brake, if it wasn't being moved, doesn't do any squeaking. But I think it'll do none of the inner double E's, but it'll do um, an overall squeak. So again, another exercise for you to fix up Richard's little messy loop. Okay, so now we've got um, pedal position. New pedal position. Oh, why doesn't it like this to pedal position? Oh, this dot current position. Oh, looking good. This dot break position. I'll just say, do you already know what it should be? Create field. Renaming the file. Yes, it's not break position. It's what is it? New pedal position. Hmm, cut and paste didn't save me very much time, did it? Would have been quicker to um, do a proper refactoring. Curses. Okay, well, there's a good lesson for you. Breaking proportion. Um, now let's think. We've moved, we've pushed it, the accelerator down. The cars, the engine's now getting more what? Oxygen or fuel or something. Um, so we need to know what the um, uh, power proportion is in acceleration proportion. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Well, acceleration proportion equals new pedal position. What about this time? Max position. Max position. Now, have I finally managed to exceed 80? Yes, I have. <laughs> Knew that was going to happen. I keep it lengthening the names in this line. Um, okay, so um, we've pushed down the um, pedal. We've recorded the new position. We can now um, compute the acceleration proportion by looking at the new position and comparing it with the maximum position. Is it halfway down? Is it all the way down? 100% of the way down? 0% of the way down? Once we've worked that out, we'd better send the message to the engine telling it um, that uh, you've got to accelerate to that amount. So this dot engine, this is the reference to the engine we're keeping locally, set... Um, Set what is it? Engine force. Set set uh, set the engine force to be uh, the acceleration proportion. No, we don't even need to set engine force if it's an engine. We can just say set the force that the engine's going to. I'm assuming as you push down the pedal, it increases the force. 
that the um, engine exerts on the wheels or on the axles, but again, not being a mechanic and being very forget with physics, I bet I've got my units wrong there, but don't worry. Good enough for us, black box. Pedal position cannot be resolved. This dot pedal position, oh, what do we call it? This dot current position. Right. Look, I've got my name inconsistent here, have I? So then some of the variables are named with temporal properties and others are named noticing that they're a pedal position, but pretty soon that's going to be irrelevant. When you make it a pedal class, we won't need to have a pedal position in the pedal class. But I guess in an accelerator class, we do need a pedal position because it's not clearly just about pedals. Okay, uh, set force is undefined. Yes, it is. And we just don't need that function at all. We'll kill that. That's just the other brake function. So we'd better tell the engine about how we ask the engine to have a method to let us set its force. All right, and that is simply um, this dot. Um, now we can customize all our engines to have different power and all sorts of things like that, can't we? And we'd have all sorts of formulas at this stage. Stage. We probably don't need it because we've just got one car at the moment. But notice we could customize this later on. So it's not necessarily clear that the same acceleration proportion will directly relate to the same amount of torque on the axles. Um, so at the moment, we're not really doing any extra work in the, in the engine itself. But um, notice we could slot a different engine in, which um, provides twice as much torque on the wheels, on the axle, for a given amount of proportion. So it's not completely pointless to do this. But of course, the real reason we're doing it is because I want you to see how the objects, you can set up a chain of objects to interact with each other. And so, for that purpose, I think we, we should have some noise coming out of the engine too. So what do we got? We got when we start it goes Rrr. when we stop it goes silence. It's turning over, we just say yes it is turning over, probably isn't. If we change the force, if we change the acceleration on the engine, we're gonna make different sounds, aren't we? Let's say um, um, if um, let's get the sound happening before we do anything else. So we'll say that the what that the engine always remembers the acceleration proportion. So we only need to send it messages when that changes. Just thinking this through. So we'll say um, private double. Um, what's the engine? It's RPM or something, is it? What how does the engine record? Hmm, okay. Uh, let's just say what's the power coming out of the engine. <laughs> I'm in the dark here. The engine I'm just trying to store how much work the engine's doing at any given instant. So we'll say that the power of the engine um, is what's gonna store that. And when you turn the engine on, we'll say the power is zero. It's just idling, nothing's happening. It's not supplying your power to the wheels. Stop power, zero, say. Um, uh, maybe this shouldn't be called set force, it's just something like called set power. And our accelerator probably didn't. Sorry, Mr. Accelerator, I just changed it. Yeah. Hang on a sec, I saw nothing at all. Who 